Welcome to the Canadian edition of Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, celebrating 55 years of ministry. I started watching Andrew. Everything that he said had a witness within my spirit and he made the word come alive. You know, he just helped me connect dots. I have such a passion and a love for the word of God and he deepened that for me. And now here's Andrew. Welcome to our Thursday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Again today, I'm continuing to teach on four basics of hearing God's voice. I wrote this little booklet that is just a, I think it's a 60-page booklet that summarizes it. And then we have teaching that I did. It's taken either from my uh, television programs or we just finished a conference in Chicago where I taught on this. And I tell you, it was powerful. So I encourage you to get this. We're also offering this book to go along with it. Uh, that's just this week on effortless change. What I've been saying so far is that uh, the four basic ways are that your conscience is one way that God speaks to you. And even people that don't know the Lord have a conscience. And that is God speaking to you. I use scriptures out of Romans chapter 1 and many different places to establish that. What I've been talking about this week is that the Word of God is God speaking directly to us. And uh, I've also been presenting this as like, if you use your conscience as the broadest, the foundational way that God speaks to everybody, and then on top of that is the Word of God. And it is a general word from God for all of us. And then above that is when you get born again, your spirit is recreated in the image of God and you just supernaturally know things. Uh, you have an unction from the Holy One and knows all things. We'll be talking about that next week. And then on top of that, you can get very specific direction through the Holy Spirit. And so these are four basic ways, but I've been making this point a number of times that if you aren't listening to your conscience, if you are just constantly violating your conscience, there is no reason that God needs to speak to you any other way because you aren't responding to the most foundation, basic way that God has us speaking to us. And then beyond your conscience, if you aren't listening to the Word of God, if you aren't taking the Word of God, this is God speaking to us. And if you aren't taking the Word of God and taking heed to it, well, then why should God give you very specific direction through the Holy Spirit or through your born-again spirit if you aren't uh, esteeming what He's already done? And man, this week I have already covered a lot of things. I haven't got time to go back through it. There's other things I don't want to get to, but I tell you, the Word of God is just powerful. I believe that I couldn't even tell you, I, I don't know how to quantify this, but I'd say the majority, probably up to 70 80% of all of the direction that I get from God just comes through the Word of God. God's Word, especially like things like the book of Proverbs, it tells you about how to relate to people and what your, uh, you know, uh, morality should be and just on and on and on. It, it provides guidelines and you just live inside of those. And, you know, there's a scripture, I'd have to look up the exact verse, but it says the integrity of a man will guide him, something to those effects. And what it is, basically, if you're saying, God, should I do this or do that? Well, if it's something that's already spelled out in the Word of God, like you shall not lie, you shall not steal, you don't bear false witness, if it's something that's already revealed in the Word of God and you've got a a problem at work and they're wanting you to lie about the product or they're wanting you to do something and you would have to lie to hide what your true intent is and you say, God, should I do this? You don't need a special word from God. The written word of God has already told you not to bear false witness and it just provides like boundaries for you that if it's within these bounds, if it's something that is going to go outside of what God's word has told you to do, you don't look for any further instruction. You know, if you ha all of a sudden see somebody and just, man, all of a sudden it's like you were struck with Cupid's arrow and you feel drawn towards them. Oh God, should I do this? No, amen. You shall not commit adultery that if you lust in your heart, it's wrong. And I don't care how strongly you feel it or how much somebody imposes on you, tempts you. You just do what the Word of God says. I tell you, if people would live this way and take this as being instruction, 
it would deal with, again, the vast majority, I don't know, but 70 or 80 percent of all of the decisions, all of the uh, desire to be led by God could be dealt with just through the Word of God. And I know that there's people watching it that you honestly don't think that way. You look at this as just being a dead book. You look at it as being a vague representation of God. You don't take it as being the accurate Word of God. I've dealt with that already in the first part of this week. I'm not going to go back through that. But this is God-breathed. It is God-inspired. This is God speaking to you. And if you don't take the written Word of God and honor it, and follow what the Word of God says, there is zero reason why God should ever be obligated to speak to you beyond this. If you're directly violating what the Word says, you don't need to look any further than that. Now, because of God's great love and because sometimes people are born again and it just takes a while to get into the Word of God and to renew your mind and learn these things, God can speak to you through a prophecy, through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. God can lead you in other ways. But again, I'm saying this is the most foundational, basic way that God has us speaking to you outside of just the human conscience, which every single person has. And if you aren't honoring this, and if you aren't reading this and following this, you shouldn't be confused about why is it that you can't hear from God because this is Him speaking to you and you aren't listening. You, you're turning in, tuning in to other things. So, man, we need to honor the Word of God. Let me just share some things with you out of Mark chapter 4. And I've actually got a lot of teaching that goes along with this. Again, I just want to say that this book on effortless change will amplify on the things I'm saying here. It actually is worth uh, probably, uh, I don't know, five or six hours worth of teaching on what I'm going to be trying to condense today and tomorrow. But in Mark chapter 4 is where Jesus gave a parable about a sower sowing seed. And it really wasn't about how to be a farmer and how to plant seed. It was just using something that was familiar to people to illustrate how the Word of God works. And it says that very clearly. When he gives the interpretation, he said in Mark chapter 4, verse 14, the sower sows the Word. So the seed is symbolic of the Word and the ground is symbolic of our hearts. And so there were four different types of ground. This was a person who didn't, you know, dig a furrow and then space the seeds and do it the way that we do today. But this was a person that just had like a bag and he reached into his bag and grabbed seed and just threw it. And it landed on four different types of ground. And only one out of the four types of ground actually produced fruit. And then among those that produced fruit, there were three different Levels. There were some that produced 30-fold, some 60, and some 100-fold. And so this is very typical of the way the Word works. You know, right now, we've got 5 billion people around this globe that could be watching this program. I'm aware that certainly not all of those watch, but there's millions, maybe hundreds of millions of people that watch this program. And the things I'm saying here, these seeds, the Word of God that I'm sharing, they have literally transformed my life and I could point out thousands of people that I know personally that have come to me and it's worked for them and it's changed their life. And the seed has the same potential in every place. It's not the seed that's the variable. Matter of fact, in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, it says, "...being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the Word of God that lives and abides forever." And that verse says that the Word of God is incorruptible. Did you know when you sow seeds, physical seeds in this earth, sometimes they just don't germinate. We don't know why. There could be multiple reasons. But the Word of God is an incorruptible seed. It's never the Word that doesn't work. Never. Never. There are people who say, well, I tried that and it didn't work. Well, it's never the Word that fails. It's either demonic opposition that comes and steals away the Word. We're going to talk about that. Or it's your own heart or different things, but it's not the Word. The Word has the same potential. And, you know, I love the fact that the Lord compared how the kingdom of God works to a seed instead of some man-made institution. You know, I have a Bible college, and in our college we give tests. But did you know that you can cheat in a man-made system? You could copy somebody else's answers. 
you could goof off and maybe not even pay attention. And then the night before your test, you could cram and you could just get these things stored in your short-term memory, but you don't have long-term. It's not in your heart. And I think every one of us can bear witness that we probably did that to some degree when we were in school and we were able to pass a test then, but we couldn't pass it now. It wasn't something that we really learned. It was just something that we did in order to pass that system. So you can beat a man-made system, but you can't cram for a harvest. You can't wait until the night before the harvest and just stay up all night long planting that seed and watering it and fertilizing it. No, there's seed and then there's time and there's harvest and you have to cooperate with those laws. Well, I think that's one of the reasons that God compared how the kingdom of God works to the way that this world system works. There are laws that govern. And here's one of the laws, the spiritual laws, is that the Word of God is like a seed and you have to plant it in the ground. The very first type of soil that this seed landed on was soil that had been just hard packed and it was so hard packed that the seed never got down in the ground. It just laid on top of the ground and the birds came and ate it up and of course it didn't produce any fruit. And this is the way that some people's hearts are. They are just so hardened and man, I've got an entire teaching on hardness of heart that'll tell you about why our hearts become hard and what it is that hardens our heart. But some people have a hardened heart towards God and because of it, the seed, the Word of God just never penetrates them. There's some of you watching this program right now that who knows, you're probably getting ready to go to work. You're doing something else. You're hearing these words, but it never penetrates past your understanding. It goes in one ear and out the other ear and you have this incorruptible seed that could literally transform your life and it just is laying on the surface. It never gets down on the inside of you and Satan just comes and steals away the Word. It says over in Matthew chapter 13, verse 19, this is the same parable that is reported here in Mark chapter 4 and in Matthew 13, 19, when it discusses this first type of uh, soil that the seed just laid on the ground. It says, these are those who understood not and the, uh, Satan came and stole away the word from them. So the very first step in getting the word of God down on the inside of you is that you've got to understand it. And you know, I may be prejudiced or biased in this, but God called me to be a teacher of his word. And there's a lot of differences between just preaching and teaching, this is an oversimplification, but a preacher basically proclaims, a teacher explains. And this is what God has called me to do. There's a lot of people that have heard that by His stripes we're healed, and they believe that healing is for us, but they don't understand how it works. There's a lot of people that know that 3 John chapter 1, verse 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. And so they believe that God wants to prosper them, spirit, soul, and body, financially, but they don't understand it. And if you don't understand, even though you've heard that God wants you to be well, that God wants to prosper you, that God wants to bless you, if you've heard that, but if you don't understand it, Satan comes immediately and steals away the Word. So I believe that this teaching ministry that I have, and of course there's many other people in the body of Christ that have it, the teacher is just really important. Otherwise, the Word never even gets below the surface. If you don't understand, it goes in one ear and out the other, and you bring forth no fruit. Then the second type of soil in this parable is in Mark chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. This is the interpretation. And Jesus said, These are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. You know, when the Lord really spoke these truths to me through this parable, this is where I was was in this second type of ground. I believe that this is actually a progression. Everybody starts with no understanding and the Word just doesn't penetrate. So then you get understanding, the Word gets down, but then it's, you don't have enough depth of earth to get the roots down 
The third type is where the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things are like weeds that come and choke the nourishment that should go towards the proper seed. And then there is finally the type of ground that produces fruit. But I think it's a progression and nobody just starts fruitful 100%. You have to go through these things. And I was in the second type of ground when the Lord really gave me revelation of this and I was still in the Baptist church. That's what I was raised in. But when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, started believing and speaking in tongues and miracles and started teaching the Word of God and talking about the authority that we had and countering this concept that whatever will be, will be, that God just does things and we have no control. When I started teaching what the Word of God says, man, they came against me big time. And that's what it says, that afflictions and persecutions come to steal away the Word. Satan isn't afraid of us. He's afraid of the Word of God. He knows that the power is not us. Without God, we can do nothing. But when His Word is sown in our heart and it begins to germinate and produce, man, He has been beaten by the Word of God. Jesus went to hell and, and whooped up on the devil and came out with the keys of death and of hell dangling on his side and he is absolute Lord and he destroyed Satan. Satan knows the power of God's Word. So it's not you that he's against. He's against the Word of God, trying to keep it from taking root on the inside of you. And so that's the reason that afflictions and persecutions come. See, when I first got started, I didn't understand that. I took it personally. When people criticize me, I thought, well, God, what's wrong? I'm trying to help people. I'm teaching what the Word says, and people are mad at me and upset. And I've now come to realize it's not me that they hate. It, they hate what I stand for. They hate the things that I'm saying because it's convicting them, and it's saying that the way that they're living is wrong, and they don't want to repent. And so rather than... than come up to the level of the Word, they just try and pull me down through discrediting me and coming against me. And you know, I've given this example many times, but it's, it's really impacted my life, and it's the best example on this that I've got. But right when I was in the midst of all of this persecution from the Baptist church, and I was still in there, and they were just giving me a hard time, uh, I went to a friend's meeting, and he called me out, of a group of about 200 or 300 people. And he said, I see you like a runner on one of these oval tracks and you're running a race and you're leading the pack. You're winning the race. But the people in the grandstands are yelling at you and telling you you're doing it all wrong. He says, I see you getting off of the track and going up into the grandstands and arguing with the spectators, trying to convince them <laughs> that you're doing it right. And he said, even if you win the race, I mean, even if you win the argument, you're going to lose the race. Forget the spectators. Stay on track. And boy, that was a word from God. And that's what this second type of person who received the word, they received it with glad. They were excited about it, but they were being criticized, persecuted, and it offended them. And they tried to justify themselves. They quit giving attention to the word and started focusing on the criticism that was coming their way, and it didn't bear any fruit. Satan will win if he can get you off the track trying to justify yourself. You know, I've got thousands of blogs written about me, what a terrible person I am. I've had some, a lot of things, and I've actually had my staff come to me one time, and they showed me some of these blogs and said, we can do some things to limit this and to counter this stuff and to stop these things. And I said, no, don't do it. And then about, I don't know, a couple of months later, they came to me and they had some really critical things. And they showed me about four or five of these things. And they said, we've got to stop this. And I told them, I said, forget it. I already told you that. I don't want one second or one cent of my money going towards me being in the grandstands and defending myself. Let people criticize me, say what they will. I'm going to keep preaching the word because even if I was to win the argument and somehow or another change these people's opinion of me, they've won, Satan has won, because I'm no longer preaching the gospel. I'm defending myself. See, that's not what you do. All of this comes to steal away the word that's been sown in our heart. And you know, it says that the reason this happened was because they didn't have any depth 
of earth. You know, when I was in the sixth grade, I remember our sixth grade teacher took these two terrariums that were about, I don't know, a foot or two high, and they were big. They were identical sizes, and he put about an inch of dirt, maybe two inches of dirt in one, and the other one he put, I don't know, maybe six to a foot of dirt, six inches to a foot. And they were identical, and then they planted tomato seeds in both of them. They put them on the desk right in front of me, they had the exact same temperature, the exact same sun. We watered them, we fertilized. Everything was identical except the amount of dirt. And did you know which one sprouted first? The one that had just an inch or two of dirt actually sprouted first because it didn't have anywhere else to put the growth. It didn't have the depth to grow. And so it sprouted first and it grew to like a foot tall before the other one had even broken the ground. But because it didn't have the root system to, to provide the nourishment, it turned white and that thing shriveled up and died. The other one just continued to grow and we actually had to put a stake in there and it, took, and it produced tomatoes. And uh, it was quite a lesson that see a lot of the growth, I'd say probably two thirds of the growth when a seed is planted is below the surface. And yet everybody wants what happens above the surface. Like in ministry, people want to see people's lives change and they want to see all of these visible results. But if you don't take the seed of God's Word and plant it in your heart and get rooted in this, you won't be able to sustain the growth when afflictions and persecutions come. So this is what happened because this seed didn't have the root system to sustain it. When persecution came, uh, it didn't produce any fruit. And this is what happens to a lot of people. They get excited about the Word and they just want to take it and run with it. But you need to prepare. You need to get the Word rooted on the inside of you. We tell our Bible college students all of the time that preparation time is never wasted time. And I tell you, there's been people that have come here and they were just so zealous for the Lord that they resented being in school for a year or two. But I heard Billy Graham say this a long time ago, that if he knew he had exactly three and a half years to preach before the Lord came back, he would spend three years shut up with the Lord, getting rooted in truth and six months ministry. And he would accomplish more in six months than he would in three and a half years without that depth and without that root and that maturity. Most people don't feel that way. But that's what this is teaching is that you need to let the Word of God be rooted in your heart. And see, this is what I'm talking about is when you're talking about hearing God's voice, you need to take the truths of God's Word and you need to sow those truths in your heart. And if you will do that, it just automatically brings forth fruit. You know, the next parable that is given in this Mark, the fourth chapter, it even uses that word in the Greek. It says, automatos, automatically, the seed automatically produces. Man, there's so much. This book will go into further explanation on this than what I'm able to do here on my television program. And this is a special offer. Tomorrow will be the last day that we're going to offer this book. We're offering this little 60-page summary of this and this will continue to be offered through the next week. And then we have a USB, we have CDs, DVDs, we even have a teaching from one of my conferences where I taught on this, and I think that this would really, really help you. So listen to our announcer as he gives you more information about how you can receive these products, and then please call or write today to receive the teaching, and join me again tomorrow as we continue the gospel truth. You know, I've been mentioning at the end of my program for uh, quite a while now that we are beginning to expand our Caris Bible College facilities. I believe that what we minister at Caris Bible College is second to none. We are seeing people's lives change by the thousands. We've already got over 12,000 graduates. We've got around 9,000 people currently in Caris Bible College, and we are seeing people's lives changed. I believe that this is what God has called me to do, not only proclaim these things myself, but make disciples, people who can go out and share these truths with others, and they are doing it all around the world. I mean, miraculous things are happening, but there's so many more who want to come 
and we can't accommodate them. And so I'm going to you. And if you've been blessed, if you bear witness with these truths that I'm saying, if you know that these truths are the answer, it's not just political, it's not just passing laws, it's changing hearts, I'd ask you to join with me. I'd like to encourage you to go to awmi.net slash campus. We have a flyover. A, our architects have put this together to show you what we have envisioned to build here on our 500 plus acre campus and you can actually go inside of the buildings and look at them. And it's just gonna cost a lot of money. We need people to join with us. And I would like to invite you to become one of our foundation builders that is helping us to build all of the facilities that are necessary to position ourselves for this third great awakening that is taking place right now. So check it out, awmi.net slash campus and there's a place on there that you can donate. And specifically, I would ask you to become a foundation builder. That is a monthly partner with us. Check it out at awmi.net slash campus. The moment you believe your healing is done and it's just a matter of time until whatever the symptoms are, are gone. Get rid of the barriers, get rid of the distractions, get rid of all of that, at least in your spirit. Get convinced you're healed. When we pray for healing, what we're doing is we're just calling out a supernatural speeding up of a natural process that's already in your body anyway. Let's get to the point where we hate sickness and disease because now we know what the Spirit of God wants for us who's alive in us. We focus on what the doctors can do for us more than what God can do for us. Say, God is my healer, not the doctor. God has done everything. You're already healed. You got to learn what some of these laws are and start flipping the switch. Andrew is offering his booklet, Four Basics of Hearing God's Voice, as his free gift to you today. This booklet is limited to one free booklet per household and is available in the US, UK, Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive your free booklet. Andrew's complete series, Four Basics of Hearing God's Voice, is available in a CD or TV DVD album and as a USB made from our daily television broadcast. This teaching is also available as a DVD album or USB recorded live at a ministry event. Each of these valuable resources is available when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. Also on today's broadcast, Andrew mentioned his book, Effortless Change. This book is available in English or Spanish when you contact us. Go to our website at awmc.ca and click on today's TV offer under the store tab to see all the ways you can get these products. Or you can call the Andrew Womack Ministries Canada helpline Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time at 647-348-2220 to order.